everybody and today I'm going to be showing you how to solve the 4x4 Rubik's Cube. If you like this video please make sure to hit that like button down below as well as the subscribe button, both of them are right there. And also share it to other people who want to solve a 4x4 Rubik's Cube. So let's get started. This is the 4x4. Uh, some people like to call it the Rubik's Revenge because I think it was the next cube made after the... 3x3, three three. and yeah, I've just seen it on other people's YouTube videos, so yeah. Uh, basically, so this is kind of like an upgraded version of the 3x3, three three, so it has an extra layer on top and on the side, and so you can kind of see like that's the 3x3 three three right there, if you can imagine, just take this outer layer out. So yeah, I'm going to scramble it and show you how to solve it. Okay. So the first step in solving this is basically the exact same as a 3x3, three three, but uh, there's a previous step. So the first step is to um, solve these centers. So the, the, all four white centers should be here. All four something color centers should be here. Yellow and I don't know the rest, but it depends on how we solve it. So first of all, I'm just going to focus on the white. And I chose this as a white because it has the most amount of white pieces on it. You can really, you can choose any, uh, fa any faces white. I'm just going to do this. So basically, you just want to start moving pieces up to the white face and trying to get it in. So you should have about three. And once you have three, you'll find that you can't really get the third one in without knocking some of the other ones out. So to do this, you basically have to note down where it is. So, for example, the... To the this one is in the bottom right hand corner so this kind of like the corner of your three should be in the bottom right hand corner and then you can just put that up and once you've got this to move it to the, this side so the opposite side to where you push that one out and then you can bring this one back out if you don't and if you didn't understand that I'm just going to do another one on the yellow side so after solving the white you have to move on to the yellow which is the exactly opposite foot. So this time you can't choose which side gets to be yellow. It has to be the exact opposite from white. Uh, so yeah, once again, you kind of want to pair things up on the bottom before you move them on top, on the side, sorry, because this is the side, this is the top, this is the bottom. Uh, so I have a pair of two, so I'm just going to move that up. But you'll notice that when you move this up, this white center gets broken. So whenever you move a piece up, you always have to rotate it 180 degrees and then move it back down so that the, that pair stays safe on the top layer. And now you'll notice all of them are on, like, all of them, like, none of them are disturbed. Um, so now I'm just going to get another one of the centers up onto the yellow face. So there's one over here. And you just kind of want to put it up top. Oh wait, actually, so you have to put this one, instead of just putting it up like that, because where are you going to put the white ones? You can't really, you have to sacrifice one of these pieces, which will just bring you back to two, to put the white back down. And so you have to put it in place of one of these centers. So for example, you have to move this entire pair on the side where this is going to go. So like turn it, since it's on the left side of the center, you have to move this to the left side, so like that, and then you can turn it up. Now you have to rotate this onto the other side, so if it was on the left side, you have to rotate it to the right side to keep it safe, and then bring this layer back down so that everything gets fixed up. So this, there's three on the yellow, and the four white are still there. Alright, so now we have to do the same thing we did with white to solve the last corner. So we have to find the edge piece, and then kind of like wherever it is so it's on the bottom left hand corner uh, you have to move this like the point to the bottom left hand corner and then kind of just move it up move this pair out of the way and then move this back down so yeah now you have to well you can do any color really but i prefer to do blue first and then go to red so you have to kind of move it to the side so that the white and the yellow face are to the to right and left and you have to just kind of keep the face you want to be blue on top 
And then what you have to do is you have to kind of find, just match up a pair. It can be any, like, anywhere. And you just have to kind of just get them, get them together. I'm not really going to show you how because it's just all about, like, fiddling with the pieces. And I'm just going to show you a little example here. So, for example, let's say, like, they were like this. What you have to do is you have to kind of find a pair first. So I'm just going to rotate it up like that, and that forms a pair. And then you're going to put it to one side, so either the left side or the right side, and then like that. And then from now on, you're not allowed to touch that side anymore. So, yeah, you have to always move the right side. And then you have to kind of, like, move this up, and now it's over there, and, like, find this. It's all the way down there. So this is in the top right. This, we have to move the point to the top right, and kind of just bring this up so it's on the top layer, move this out of the way, and then just bring this down. So yeah, that's how you do it. Next, you have to, okay, this is where it starts getting important. So you can either put the red on this side or on this side, but on a traditional 3x3 Rubik's Cube, it's always on, uh, wait a sec, it's always on this side. So if you keep the white on top and then kind of just uh, move the white face to the top and then have like blue facing you, the red should go on this side, so the left side of the blue. So you have to really make sure that you're not doing it on the opposite side. Okay, so wait, just checking if that's right. Yep, this side. And so you just have to get red pieces up there basically. But every time you move a piece, you have to like move it to the other layer and then bring the, the piece that you moved back down because otherwise it ruins the blue center. So wait, let me just get back to where it was. So it was like that. And so if you want to move this pair up to the top, then it, you can move it like this, but this pair gets broke, this blue center gets broken. So you have to move it to the other side and then bring this back down to fix the blue center. Now you just have, you just kind of, it's it's very repetitive, the process. So yeah, you just move it up, out of the way, and then bring that back down. And it, this is all the way over here. This is in the bottom right corner. And then just, yeah. It's, it's actually very easy. Uh, this is just a long way of explaining a very short process. Uh, so now I have the, four centers and okay another thing you should know after the red will be the green um you'll know that because um if you know the opposites of the cube so the opposites of the cube are, are white and yellow another opposite is blue and green so they're on opposite sides of the face and another opposite is red and yellow red and orange so you, you just have to remember those and you'll be good uh, on, also, you have to remember these two, so um, if you have white on top, red is always to the left of blue. And so since, so what has to go on this face? Well, you can just look on the other side and it's blue. So the opposite of blue is green, so you'll know that green has to go on this face. Uh, oh, sorry, I held it the wrong way. And then, the, for me, there's a point and I'm just going to bring that point back down. And yeah, it's really easy. If you solve three centers, you automatically solve the fourth center. So yeah, now that the centers are done, we can move on to the second step, which is to make it into a three by three. I'm gonna explain what that means. So basically you have to like pair these edges. So what you have to do is you have to get a yellow, I mean, it's not a yellow. Uh, oh my God, I'm forgetting the colors, white and orange. And a white and orange here. So wait, actually I'm just going to use the example of the reds. So wait, I'm just going to do it. And, that's, and that'll show you what I mean. Okay. Um, don't worry about this. So you should get a pair like, like this. So like the two of the same edges next to each other. And I have already have three pairs. I saw another one yet. So I already have three pairs. So, to do that, you basically have to, first of all, find two edges that, and put them on the same face. So, two of the exact same edges and put them on the same face. So, for example, I'm just going to choose this uh, blue and white um, edge and I'm going to try and find another blue and white. So, it's over here. 
Uh, to put these three two on the same face, and I can just rotate this. From now on, whenever you're rotating, never rotate the middle layers. Only because that ruins the centers. Only rotate the side layers. Oh, well, you will have to rotate the middle layers, but only when I tell you to. Um, so, yeah. Now I have these two on the same face. But this is a bad case. Because the they should be, shouldn't be on the same level. So this guy should be over here. Plus, the same color shouldn't be facing up. So white has to be... Over, so this edge piece has to be flipped around and over here. And to do that, you basically have to hold it like this. So the edges are on either side, uh, right and left. Uh, move the right side up. Turn the cube so that the, like, turn it like this. Uh, move this edge to the, so that the front face uh, to the left. And then this right face up. So now you notice the blue and, uh... Well, I'm forgetting my colors. The blue and white uh, are in the correct spot. Once you've got it like that, what you have to do is you have to kind of cut them, like cut the center. This is the only time when you should be cutting the center to bring the two edges together. So you kind of like bring them together. And, but that's not it. Like you're not done because you will have to put this back. And when you do that, it gets ruined. So once you put them together, you have to move it to another layer. So I'm just going to move it to this, the top layer. Uh, so move this up here and then bring it out of the way and replace it with an unsolved pair. So don't replace it with a solved pair because just because the solved pair will get ruined. Replace it with an unsolved pair and then undo the moves you just did. So bring that back down and undo the centers. And now you notice that all the centers are solved and also you have a blue and white um, edge. So you basically have to do that for every single edge. It doesn't actually take as long as I make it sound like it takes. It's basically just boom, 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 boom. So that's one done already. So, uh, yeah, it's it's really easy, especially if you have muscle memory. Uh, one thing to note uh, is, let's say you, you bring them together, so these two. You bring the orange and blue edges together, or well, any color, it doesn't have to be orange and blue. And when you try to, and then you move it up to the top, but you can't find an unsolved edge. An unsolved edge, yeah. So in that case, you bring it back down and flip the cube. So it looks like this. And then on the bottom, there should be some unsolved uh, edges. So you can just move that up, um, bring an unsolved edge to the side, and bring it back down. Uh, also, another thing to note is whenever... Oh, no. Okay, wait. I need to set myself an example up. Okay. So whenever... Let's bring these two edges together, the green and orange. And then I move it up to the... Uh, the top layer but and then you'll find there's no solved edge so then what you can do is bring it back down but you'll notice that there is a solved edge but when you turned it up it just got lost down there so what you have to do in that case is whenever you move this piece the uh, two solved edges together whenever you move that up make sure that you move it when a solved edge is on that side so, for example, the cube was like this. And then what I did was I moved this so that these two, I cut the centers so that these two edges are together. And then I have to replace them with an, a solved edge. So I move it up and find an unsolved edge and bring it back down and then just fix the centers. I'm just going to skip ahead to the part where, you know, it kind of gets like, uh, it boils down to a few edges. And yeah, so I've got it where it needs to, it's like down to like two edges. Um, if you have it down to three edges, then so let's say those three edges were one over here, one over here, and one over here. Then what you can just do is move this third one up to the top layer and find so that when you move that up, it does that. It, you can move this one back, sit down, and then yeah. But 
you eventually have a case where you have two, like two of these edges. And to solve that, what you basically need to do is you have to get them across from each other. So like they are the opposite of what they're meant to be. So for example, wait, they shouldn't be like this uh, white and green. Like they shouldn't be diagonal from each other. The pairs should be on the same level as each other. So it's the opposite of what you would usually do. So to get it back, you have to move the right layer up and turn the cube. And then the front layer, uh, clockwise, no, anti-clockwise, and the right side up, just to get them across from each other. And then that's, and then what you have to do is you have to do this formula to solve these two edges. Um, what it is is the bottom two. So you can't just like try pairing them because there'll be no thing to bring back down. So the formula is. The bottom two layers are to the right, then, um, sorry, then the right layer up, then the front layer um, anti-clockwise, then the top layer up, then the right layer, the, the right down, then the front layer clockwise, and then the two bottom layers um, to the left. And then you'll notice that these two should be solved. So these two pairs should be solved. And that is how you do it. So basically that is the first two phases of the of the 4x4 completed. And basically now what's left is you just solve it like a 3x3. Three three. Um, if you don't, well, but there is like some, there's like three parodies, three parody cases which I'm going to show you. Um, after I show you how to solve it like a 3x3. Three three. Um, if you want to just like get straight into it, just go into my 3x3 three three link down below. Uh, yeah, I will be posting the link in the description. So yeah, make sure to just click that if you just want to get go straight into it. And yeah, but if you want like the proper details of how each formula works and that kind of stuff. So basically, in solving the 3x3, three three, you basically have to do the white layer first. Where's the white center? Oh my god, okay. And yeah, so you have to align these edges so that one, the, the non-white side of them matches up with the correct center. So like, like that. And, and then move them to the white. So if it was like that, you have to move them to the white. So for this one, it's already matching, so I can just move that up to the top. And then, okay, the orange one, I'm going to move that over to, yeah, and then move it to the top. And that's already matching, so I can just move it to the top. Wait, does this, oh, okay, no. It looked like one of the edges were unmatched. So now I have the white, like, oh, wait, no, I need to do the corners. So basically, to do the corners, you have to kind of find one in the bottom layer. Uh, oh, yeah, I found one. So basically, if you have it like this, so the white face is facing down. Then what you need to do is you first of all have to find the correct spot that it needs to go in. So for example, this one needs to go here because the other two colors represent the other two faces. And so to do that, you have to kind of move the bottom layer to the left uh, and then bring the right layer down. Uh, move the bottom layer to the right two times and then bring the top layer down. So now it's in a different case. If, if you have this case, what you need to do is you, you need to match the... So you just ignore the one on the bottom face. And also ignore the white face. And you have to match the other color that's remaining with the proper center. And then what you have to do... If the white piece is on the right side, you have to move to the left. If it was on this side, I would move it to the, that side. So I move it to the left. And then bring the right side down and then move this back in, and then bring that back up. So now it's over there. And yeah, so now I have to find another one on the bottom layer. Here it is. So ignore the one on the, ignore the color on the bottom layer, ignore the white and the other color, match it with the correct center. So with the green. And since it's on the left side, I have to move it to the right. Bring this, the opposite side down, move it back and move that back. 
Okay, now I have another one, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do this one. Um, okay. So, now, actually, I'm just gonna stop it there, and yeah, just watch my 3x3 link down below. I'm just gonna skip straight to the parity section. So, yeah, um, just, uh, watch the link in the 3x3. I mean, just, yeah, watch the 3x3 video if you want to solve it completely. And, yeah. Oh, well, actually, I'm just gonna do, like, a, like, a, I'm not gonna show, I'm not gonna tell you the formulas or anything, but I'm just gonna show you solving it. So you can skip ahead if you don't want to see that. So, yeah. Basically, the next phase is to solve the middle layer, which I am doing right now. And it involves a formula which you need to learn, which is in the 3 by 3 section down below. And, yeah. I'm just going to do it. Actually, I might even skip this part. Alright, I've, I've skipped all the solving and I am on to this, the parity part. So, basically, the parity is, there are three different types of parity. One of them is this case, so, where this, the, these, this one and this one need to be swapped around. Another case is this one, and I can't remember what the last case was. I'll get to it later. So, to solve this, uh, you have to kind of position it so that, the unsolved, uh, the unsolved edge is facing you and the yellow is on top and then you have to do it is um, the top two layers um, two times the right two layers two times the top layer turn it two times the middle right layer so this layer two times and then the top layer two times the right layer two times and the top two layers two times. And you should have solved that parity case. All right, I'm just gonna go get to the next parity case and I'll be right back. So this is the next uh, parity case you can have where the edges you need to swap are this one and this one. So these two. And when you have this, you wanna have it facing like this. So one of the edges you need to solve are at the back and the other one is on to the right side. And then you want to do the exact same formula we used for the previous one. So the top two layers, and then the right two layers, and then the top layer two times, and then the middle layer two times, then the top layer two times, the right layer two times, and then the, uh, the right two layers two times, and then the top two layers two times. And then you will have this case, where I should have taught you how to solve it in the 3x3. Three three. So actually, I'm just going to show it to you now, because why not? So you need to put the solved side at the back, and then you need to do uh, this formula. Oh, and the yellow at the top, and then this formula. So right side two times, top side uh, clockwise, um, right side up, top side clockwise, Right side down, top side anti-clockwise, right side down, top side anti-clockwise, right side down, top side clockwise, and then right side down. If it's still not solved, you just have to do that one more time. So I'm just going to do it like that. And then it should be solved. And either that's it, or there is one more parity case. I'm pretty sure there is one more parity case, so let me just get to that. So there is another anthro parity, and it's this. So this case might actually be in the previous, uh, like, um, so this uh, case might affect you very much in the, like, when solving it, when getting to the finished point. Uh, like especially when you're trying to orient these edges. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just watch the 3x3 video to solve it. And yeah, I'm just going to show you how to flip these two edges around. And this is quite a long algorithm, so it'll be very, very hard to memorize it. But luckily, I've just got it written down on paper over here. So, yeah. To do it, you the first step is uh, the right middle layer. Um, anti-clockwise, so down, and then uh, the top layer two times, 
and then the left layer down, and then the front layer two times, then the left layer up, so anti-clockwise, uh, yeah, and then the front layer two times, and then the middle right layer two times, so in just any direction because it's two times. And then the top layer two times, and that's halfway there. Um, then it's the middle right layer up, then the top layer two times, uh, and then the middle right layer back down, so anti-clockwise, and then the top layer two times, then the front layer two times, uh, then the middle right layer two times, then the front layer two times. And that is how you solve it. Um, to, yeah, that way, that is how you solve it. So that is how you turn these two edges around. Um, if you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button down below, and as well as the subscribe button. Um, and yeah, also, if you're subscribed and you want to know when I upload my videos uh, and you want to get a notification, then just hit the notification bell down below, which is also over there. But it only appears once you've subscribed, so make sure to subscribe. Um, if anybody loves grey out there, um, if you click that red subscribe button, which must be totally disgusting for you because you love grey, um, just if you hit it, it becomes grey, so yay. Oh, oh that rhymes, okay. Um, yeah, so make sure to hit it. Also, if any of you like blue out there, um, then hit the like button because from grey, it turns to blue, so yay. Okay, I don't know. Um, yeah, so just please, please, please hit that subscribe button and also share my videos to people who want to solve the 4x4. So goodbye, see you in my next video.